you want to leave this place But we grew up in this old town Just put it all behind Remember you and I Would always find somewhere to hide When we were kids So we could see and hear the water run Rivers gonna cry when you're gone River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. River's gonna cry when you're. River's gonna cry when you're. River's gonna cry when you're gone. So Leaf has been very interested in ants lately, and yesterday caught himself a queen and some workers and soldiers and some brood. So here, here's the nest um, that we're gonna be making them. Yep, we we we're turning an old nest. terrarium into um, into a nest. So the first thing we've got to do is put some layers of rock on the bottom, and I'm gonna show you the whole process as we go. But here. Here's is my little, ants. Yep. Yeah, ants. You can see so the far. queen in there because she's Let's on see the see if I can get it to focus. The queen's on the little mound in there and she's the biggest one. Okay. Yep, yeah, you can see the queen. The queen is right there. And then there's lots of other ants and her her eggs. So once we get the big terrarium set up. They've yeah, been so drinking water honey from, water. Some honey water. Once we've got that set up, we'll move them in. One's coming out, a major's coming out. And a. <laughs> what? Morning, everyone. 
this is my morning routine now. <laughs> I get out first thing and I walk around the gardens and see what might need to be done. Um, what's blooming, what's happening, and look what I found today. There we go. Yay! Monarch babies on the milkweed. We've only ever had one. I, I planted this milkweed. Oh, there's another one. I planted it three years ago. And we've only ever had one monarch and um, caterpillar. And it got eaten by a praying mantis. We had a really big praying mantis population that year. So I'm super excited to see we're starting to get more. The monarch's just starting, or the, um, the milkweed is just starting to bloom. So it's attracting all the bees and the pollinators. And here's a very pretty pink variety. Look at that. Do you remember seeing the blueberry bushes with me last time? They are drooping. They're so heavy right now. <laughs> Look, I had to put up stakes to hold them up. Look at those blueberries. Oh my gosh, so tasty. Every day we come out and we grab a few for part of a meal, you know, put it in our breakfast or have it as a dessert. There's so many of them. And I've got a couple of chicory back here that have really taken over that little blueberry space. So I'll probably dig them up for the roots this fall. I did a tutorial on making toasted chicory root tea um, a while back if you're interested. And look at this echinacea. It's just coming up everywhere in my garden. I only planted it in one spot, right there. And that whole bed became echinacea. And now it's spreading everywhere. I have some here and then in the back garden. So on the other side of the house, <laughs> I have probably 20 echinacea plants that are as big as this one. So I might dig some up for medicine, dig the roots up, or at least, you know, plant them in a, you know, bring them all to a field somewhere where they can grow. Look, this is the first bloom right in there. My comfrey was getting crazy and it was all over the paths and just falling all over the plant. So I trimmed all the, all the big side leaves and I put them in the garden to use them as mulch in some areas. There's some over here, some back over there, and a little over here. So this is my rhubarb. And for those of you who have followed the tomato, or the tomato, <laughs> the, the turtle saga, um, we have three now and we keep finding them under here um, but we can tell that we have three different ones two of them look like females one like ma a male the male has really pretty spots on his um, neck and legs and one of them is just so tiny and round it's very cute if I can find one I'll show them to you but they like to hang out in the rhubarb and look look how the corn is doing the corn has come up so I planted the beans and now the beans have come up and then these little empty spots of where the squash has gone. But look at that. It's growing. Some of it is kind of yellowish. Um, and I know that either means too little water or too little nitrogen. And it's planted in almost completely compost, so I know it's got lots of nitrogen. And I've been watering it, but maybe not enough. I don't know, but it's looking good. I also got back in the dye pots yesterday. Look at that. There's just so much blooming right now that I really wanted to get it on the cloth. <laughs> and these are little like bralettes. I'd gotten them a while ago. And let me grab the other one. Um, and I mordanted them. And then I forgot about them. <laughs> so I took them out and was not expecting to see this much color on them. Um, cotton doesn't usually take color as well as silk or wool, so I was very surprised, but they turned out so nice. So I'm hoping to do some more of these because they're super comfy little, little cotton bralettes. But the factory that makes them is closed right now. So hopefully soon. Aren't they fun? 
I can't wait to put mine on. I made this one for Kaya, kind of as an early birthday present, and she likes it, so I'm glad. It's kind of chaos in here right now. <laughs> I've got a bunch of stuff pulled out so I could do some dyeing, eco printing, and dyeing yarns, and stuff like that in preparation for the. Um, SAF Festival. It's still currently going, but I'm not sure it will actually happen. If it doesn't, I plan on having a nice big store update. I've not been doing much knitting at all, but let me show you what I have done. Oh, look. I have a visitor. <laughs> I have to remember that they, the cats like to come in here. Um, otherwise, they might get locked in when I'm done at night. So here's what I finished. These are the Andromeda hats. And I showed you... I think I showed you this one and the start of this one on the last podcast. But I finished them all. These... Let's see, this one is made with Green Mountain Spinnery's Weekend Wool, and it's worsted weight. And then these two, the colors are... Um, spin cycle yarns. This one has a white hand spun with it and this one has gray um, and wilder which is spin cycle yarn. And I love how they turned out. You start from the center, from the top, and so you can make it as big or small as you want. So it could be a doll's hat or it could be a baby hat or a hat for large adult head. So it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so that's up in my Ravelry page now. The Andromeda Cap is what I call it. And um, all the, everything I earned from the sale of this as well as all of my other patterns on Ravelry for the month of June are going to Campaign Zero. And that's to um, help fight against police brutality and try to uh, support the Black Lives Matter movement. I've also got this that I finished, and I don't think I was finished the last time I podcasted. And this is the Mushroom Girl. It's a pattern by uh, Cozy Blue, and I absolutely love it. Here's what I decided to do with her hair. They're called Bullion Knots. And um, once I figured them out, they were pretty easy to do. And I love the way it looks like moss. It turned out so beautifully. So this was a lot of fun. I'm going to definitely cast on, cast on, stitch on another one soon. <laughs> That's it. That's all I've been working on as far as um, needle or knitting stuff go. such a mean kitty. Not mean. He just didn't give you any warning when he didn't want to be loved. And he would whack you in the face. When he turned four, he started getting on my lap and wanted snuggles. And since then, he's been a big fluff. <laughs> he still whacks you occasionally, but not as much. So over the past few months, um, I've been thinking a lot about what I want for my business and for my life and my creative process, and I really want to simplify things. Just making sure he's not going to bite my elbow. <laughs> so I've decided I am going to close my Patreon account. Um, I am so grateful for those of you who have been a part of my Patreon family and um, all that you've given to me, and I really, really appreciate it. But right now, the way the world is, um, and everything that's been going on, I, it would be my wish that you would take the money that you would otherwise have donated to my Patreon account and give it to something um, that you feel like would make a difference in this world. 
something that will make it better for our kids, better for our parents, uh, better for our animals. Um, just give it to something that will make a difference because I'm going to create either way. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, it, it's almost the summer solstice, so I'm going to do one last giveaway, and I think those three prizes are going to be surprises. Um, I'll take pictures of them when they're put together and put it up on the next podcast, but for the winners, it'll be surprises, and I'll announce on the Patreon page the names of the three winners. Um, but thank you again for everything you guys have done, whether it's been support through Instagram, support by buying my, my, um, my makings, or supporting through the podcast or Patreon, whatever. I do appreciate it very, very much. It feels like I have this extended family all around the world, which is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, thank you. This is Topaz. Topaz is a speckled Sussex. Can you turn her towards me a little bit? There we go. Look at mommy. Topaz is super sweet. She likes to be held. <laughs> Don't jump off this um, she likes to go to sleep in your hands. Topaz will lay a light brown egg. So you keep showing me her butt. Can you turn her around? It's <laughs> hard. Let's see if I can get her face. She likes to actually put herself in your hand so she can fall asleep at night. It's really sweet. <laughs> Mom gets to see it every night, but I don't. Tiger's eye. Yeah, this is Tiger's Eye. And Tiger's Eye is, we believe, a golden laced Wyandotte. We got two different kinds of Wyandotte. One was a gold lace and the other was um, going to be a different kind that could be a blue or white or I can't remember the varieties. <laughs> so... <laughs> Can you turn around so I don't see her butt? Thanks. I'm so we think she's the gold one because she has a lot of gold on her leaves. And she leaves. will also, or on her, on her, on her uh, feathers, she will also lay light brown eggs. Okay, next. Next. You want to leave? Tigers, are you ready? Set. Moonstone. She's going to go with her crew, I think, in a minute. Moonstone's kind of muddy. All right, so this is Moonstone. Yep. Moonstone, we believe, is a um, Splash Orpington. We know she's a Splash Orpington. Yeah. Um, so let me just give you a little basics on chickens. They come in many different varieties and many different colors. And so we got to pick from the hatchery which kinds we wanted. Um, and, well, we got... She was pure this color right yeah here. she was a very um, white yeah she was almost pure white mm -hmm. but we picked a bunch of varieties that are good layers that are friendly um that aren't skittish and that way we could hang out with them it's also good to have ones that aren't skittish if you want to be able to handle them a lot and that way we can check them and make sure they're they don't have mites or they're not injured you know that you can handle them more easily um, Orpingtons are also known for going broody, so um, they they make generally make good mothers. Um, but within a type of chicken, there's many different varieties of colors. Just like you could get a poodle that has different colors, um, she is an Orpington. That is what's called splash. So she has white, but on her feathers, can you show anywhere on the feather where she's got a little bit of the gray? She's got she's like she's kind of muddy, so yeah, she's been rolling around. She's she's gonna have black and gray kind of speckles in her white, and she will lay um, light brown eggs. Yeah. Who's next? Opal. Opal is another Orpington. She's the same as Moonstone, except she is expressing genes for what we believe will be a blue Orpington. So. Um, She's the gray one, not the one I'm holding against my Right, head. right, this so this next. first one right here. Um, Opal's also kind of funny looking because she's the only one who hasn't gotten, like, neck and back feathers. She's just got wing feathers, so she kind of looks... And she's starting with tail fish. She kind of looks like a Skeksis, if you ever saw the Dark Crystal. <laughs> um, they're going through what I call their awkward teenage phase. But, but yeah, so I don't know all the genetics of it, but um, just depending on the parentage... Uh, it you will get different kinds of colors and and um, 
expressions of genes for colors. So she is what I think we think is going to be a blue Orpington, and Moonstone will be Splash. Same color as Moonstone. And here is Pearl. So this is Pearl. Pearl, you can tell by that little poof on her head. You mean the big poof? The big poof now. It's gotten much bigger. She's going to have like a crown kind of on her head. She is one of our cream leg bar layers. And cream leg bars lay beautiful blue eggs. Um, and I love back. the color of her chest. Good. She's kind of got this peachy color on her chest. Who has wants to say hi again? So we have two cream leg bars. We have pearl and we have diamond, and they're both going to have kind of a crown on their for head, like a poof on their head. Everyone except for each of our Wyandots and our rooster, um, pretty much, and one other, I forget what it's called, we have two of them. Yeah. All right, who's next? Obsidian. The rooster. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's the smallest of all of them and quite skittish. Yeah, it's funny. Our rooster we, is currently the smallest. Uh oh, cat. That's all right. Look um, at his white stripe on his. Yeah, back. he's got a really pretty patch of white feathers coming in on the back. So we specifically got um, a rooster that's called a Swedish flower hen rooster, because that is what our last rooster was, Merlin, and he was the kindest, best rooster ever. And Swedish flower hen roosters are known for being really good roosters. So um, hopefully he'll chill out a little bit because he's kind of skittish, but. Um, we're hoping He's he'll a be a good rooster. Check. Yeah. Oh, stop. Stop. All right, this is Emerald. Also speckled Sussex. She's our other speckled Sussex, so you can tell she looks a lot like um, Topaz, who was the first chick. Um, and she likes being held a lot too. She'll lay Not brown as much eggs. As Topaz, light brown but... eggs. She's more speckled than Topaz. Mm -hmm. Hold on, it just started. Go ahead. Here's Diamond. So this is Diamond. She's our other cream leg bar. And you can see she's got a little poof on her head. Everyone so just went inside. Yeah, we'll get them. We'll get them back out. She's going to be laying um, blue eggs. You can see a small, a bit of a poof. Yeah, her poof isn't as big as opal or uh, pearls. She keeps confusing opal and pearl. I do. Because they're both kind of white stones. <laughs> Here is Ruby. This is Ruby. So Ruby is one of our green egg layers? No. What is Ruby? Uh, I forget. Yeah. Wait, what? No. She's one of the green egg layers. She is? Yeah. Um, so we have two that are called green eggers. <laughs> olive eggers. Olive eggers, that's right. Olive eggers. And they make what's kind of like an olive-colored egg. And um, they come from mixed parentage. It will be um, a dad who is either a brown or blue layer and a mom who is either a brown or blue layer. So they have to have one brown laying parent and one, one dark brown laying parent and one blue laying parent. And it makes green laying children. So we don't know what her breed is, but we think, uh -huh. I think from her coloring, gentle please Leafy. I'm just holding on to her. From her coloring and because she looks so much like our cream leg bars, I think one of her parents might be a cream leg bar. Um, she doesn't have the poof going on, but she certainly looks like them other than the poof. So that would be the, br the blue egg layer in her might be from a cream leg bar. So that is Ruby. All right. So Jade, Jade is another olive egger, and we are pretty sure we know what her parents are because she, she has, has a poof. she has a little poof growing. So we think that one of her parents is a cream leg bar, and the other one may be a Moran. Right. So she also because has feathered both feet. Both our Morans have already passed away, sadly. Yeah. But um, they both had this little white spot and these feathered feet. Yep. So Morans, which are dark brown layers, like really dark, they can they can be very cho chocolatey dark brown eggs. They have feathered what are they feet. Doing? Can you lift your hand just a tiny bit so we can see your feet? Because I can't see her feet. You can kind of see she's got some feathers starting to poke out. Like there's one even right there. Yep. So we think one of her parents was probably a super dark egg layer, Moran's, and one of her. Um, 
parents is probably a cream leg bar because she has the little poof. So she'll be laying olive colored eggs. And that is Jade. Here is Amber. All right, this is Amber. She is our other Wyandot. Um, we ordered, like I said, we ordered one that was going to be potentially um, a blue, black, or splash red lace lion, lion dot, something like that. It was a crazy long name. And I think that might be what she is. I know she's Wyandotte, dot, but I don't know what her feathering will be. We'll figure that out, or what her coloring will be. Once she um, has her adult feathers, we'll figure out what her coloring will be. Mm-hmm. Are you finally? Finally, here is Kyanite. Kyanite. She has really beautiful white and red feathers. And we think, so when you order chicks from this hatchery, we ordered from Meyer Hatchery, you can order what's called a meal maker. And that means that they give you a free chick if you agree to, to use their eggs for free meals. Leafy, don't do that, please you agree to use their eggs for free meals for someone. So you give one, give them to someone in need. So we think she is our meal maker. So that means we don't know what kind of chicken she is. But we think she's like a... We think she's what's called a green queen. Um, she has all the markings of um, a chicken called green queen that is from that hatchery. Um, and I say that because she has, her comb looks like it's going to be more of a bump than like fingers. You know how combs kind of can look like this on a chicken's head. Um, she has more of like a bump. So it looks like it's going to be a, a pea comb or a different kind of comb. And the only chickens that they sell at that hatchery that have that type of comb and the type of coloring she has are what's called green queens. So we think... And hopefully it's a she, because it could be a he. We think she is a green queen, and if so, she'll lay green eggs. We'll have three green egg layers. We'll have three green eggers. Yep, but it is possible that she is a rooster. Um, we'll only know when she's probably about... 10,000 years old. No, when she's three to four months old at least, we'll start probably noticing the feathers coming in in a different pattern. Longer feathers around the tail and around the neck. And maybe um, instinct to protect friends. And, and, and also maybe a crow. <laughs> so we'll Set see. Up in here for right now, we made a little makeshift spot where the babies can be and have their food and water without the big girls getting to it since they need special food. The, half of them are in here, the other half's out there. Yeah, we and the big girls are right here. This roost. We used to have this set up then just it down. Yep. So this is uh, Dandelion. She is a lemon cuckoo Orpington. <laughs> so there's a lot of variety of Orpingtons. <laughs> um, and she's super sweet. She's kind of like a mama hen and she likes to take care of the babies. And then back there we've got Sunflower and Fluffy Fluff. Fluffy Fluff is the like golden one. She's a buff Orpington. And Sunflower is the one that looks like it's about She's about to fall off the roof. Yeah, Sunflower is, um, she's Molding a blue egg layer. Hard. She's a blue egg layer, and she also is just getting past a molt, which means she lost a lot of her feathers and looked pretty scary. And but they're mostly coming back hard. right now. Um, Hello, little praying mantis. So those are our three ladies, the older ladies. These two are eight, and Fluffy Fluff in the back is six.